My name is Willie Pika. I'm a traditional bow and arrow maker from the Comanche Nation out of Southwest Oklahoma. I guess I've been making bows and arrows with the interest I had since I was about nine years old. I remember doing it then and learning how to make the bow, how to make the arrows. And at the time I was doing it, being nine years old in 1960, there was no material. There was no books, there was no resource material. So I kind of learned on my own. Then I asked my grandmother, I said, Grandma, is there any elders that know how to make bows and arrows? Oh yeah, this guy does this, 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 this. I said, well, can we visit him? So if we had a chance, I'd go visit one guy and he'd teach me how to make a bow. And I noticed with them teaching me how to make a bow or an arrow that these guys I was asking, their face just lit up. It was like, you want to know? You want to carry this tradition on that we're losing? Because even at that time, I, there wasn't many people that wanted to learn how to make bows and arrows. It was a lost lost art at that time. So I, I kind of felt good that I wanted to learn a craft that I could carry on for the next generation. So I would visit with one gentleman and he would tell me about bows and arrows, how to make them, how to shape them, what wood to cut them out of, when to cut the wood, what to look for in the tree. And we use basically uh, bow dark. They've made bows out of everything. They've made them out of um, mulberry. They made them out of other oak trees. But bow dark is uh, one that's it's got more spring into it and just stronger. It makes a good good bow. So then I would go visit another one. He would talk about arrows, how to make them, the wood you get. There was different woods they would use because they was always on the move. Comanche people travel all the way from Kansas down to Texas, New Mexico, and over as far as Arkansas. That was our home base. That's where Comanche lived. So. They were always looking and gathering wood to make their bows and arrows. So they wouldn't use anything they could find. For the arrows, I've heard they use reeds and then some cherry tree stalks they would use. And then of course, bow dark you can always find all over the country. So I loved it. They would teach me how to make the arrows, what kind of wood and how to make them. And so it was good that I had an interest and learning how to shape a bow, how to make an arrow, to carry these traditions on. Even though I'm 70 years old now, there's not many of us, less than a handful of Comanche bow makers. But I'm proud that I learned the best I could and I developed different skills on how to make a better bow string, making out going from rawhide or not rawhide but imita uh, sinew to imitation sinew and it made a big difference because you use regular sinew when it gets wet it stretches well if you use imitation sinew it doesn't stretch and it'll it'll go longer so i've developed a technique that made a bow out of uh, imitation sinew worked out well i also wanted to explain to you that comanche bows they were short bows they were made to shoot from the back of a horse. So they weren't very long. They're anywhere from 36 inches and mine are about 48 inches. Uh, back in the 1800s, the Comanche people were smaller, so they accommodate a smaller bow. But as we grew, and now we're six foot um, and bigger, we had to create a longer bow just so it fit. So what I do is, Make make mine 48 inches. But the technique of shooting a bow, it's not the draw back to your cheek kind of thing. That's not it. Ours from the back of a horse. We would uh, shoot from the back of a horse. So it was a just quick draw. Anything, even shooting over here is a quick, just, you know, let it go. Point, let it go. That's how we shot. It wouldn't hold it. You would just visualize a point and then aim it and then let it go that's how you would shoot a bow uh, one of the things that 
Comanches did that a lot of people didn't know of when they made their bows at the bottom they would attach it um, more of a permanent at the top you can see that it's only knocked on one side since we were horse people the bow was made to do just a quick shot you know from the back of a horse but the other reason there was one knocking and that way they could ride on a horse they could pull it up and pop it in it was just on one side so that worked out really well the other thing I found out later is when you knock it to one side, it brings that bowstring over so you get more of a straight shot off the side and opposed to, you know, having the arrow come from the center off the side. So if you move it over, it gets a straighter shot down the side of the bow. So that's one advantage of it. And through the years, I've made hundreds of bows, cut down trees and made them the best I could. And the other thing that I've, I've learned from the elders is how to, you know, make the arrows. And they did several different ways. This one's made out of dogwood. I made this one because his tribal covers were, colors were red, white, and blue. So that's what he wanted. But I made it traditional Comanche style. Traditional Comanche style is we had on three sides of the shaft, and we'll give a close up later, but there's grooves. They're called blood grooves. So when he went into the animal, it's supposed to let the blood still come out. That was a good thought. But the other thought, uh, reason I found out was that when you put a groove in the shaft, it gives it like that tin horn effect. It gives it strength. So I found out my arrows were staying straighter longer so it worked out great and besides making them out of dogwood when you cut a dog piece piece of dogwood it's heavy because it's loaded with moisture you take the bark off and cure it it makes a strong and it gets lighter as it gets older so it makes a straighter shooting arrow because it doesn't dip because it's not so heavy so that's the other thing one the other thing Two is a progression of the arrow points. They started out hundreds of years ago, they didn't know about other points, so they sharpened the arrow point, I mean the arrow point just to a point, and they could shoot that. As they involved, evolved, then they went to bone points made out of different bones. I, When I make them, this one's made out of a buffalo rib bone that I fashion out and grind down and attached to my arrows. So that's the other one. Then they learned how to make uh, flint points. That's a whole new process too. So that's another thing they did. And uh, then when the frontiermen came through, people traveling to the west as they crossed our property, they made them out of the wagon wheel. It had a, The wagon wheel has a metal rim around the outside. They would take that rim, break off pieces, and fashion it into an arrow point. But the problem with that is it made the point of the arrow too heavy. So when you shoot it, it goes to a distance and it starts dropping because it's heavy in the front. So that wasn't good. So when they found out they could use the metal from the old hand saws that the frontier people brought by, it made a lighter point. You make them sharper and talk about the strength on a light piece beautiful pieces so all my points are made out of a, a old hand saw and when all you do is make your pattern on the on the blade and then you take a cold chisel and chisel along your braid and then take uh, pliers and just it'll break off it'll snap off then you could grind it down or file it down to make the point that you want it makes a beautiful point the other things I learned from the elders is to make different kinds of uh, arrow bags. They made them from rawhide. They made them from just buckskin. One of the old styles they made out of a uh, bobcat. This is one that I have, and there's very few of these. I only know of two other people that have them, and I made them. But this is a bobcat hide. I just decorated with simple decoration. This is horsehair. Because Comanche people were horse people. 
So then that's what I would make my um, arrow bag out of. I made other kinds. This one here is just made out of a buckskin. Uh, it's got the medallion that some of my people bead and I put horse hair and fringes on it. And then it'll tie up to go over your back. So it's another one. In rawhide, I don't have one with me, but a lot of rawhide bags were made. They're more um, sturdy and rigid so your arrows don't fly out. But I'm proud that I had a chance to learn this craft, that I can pass it on, hopefully for generations to come. Right now I'm going on 61 years of learning to make bows and arrows. And I'm proud of the fact that I can teach each process, make the arrow, make the bow, make the string, and then shoot them. That's what we do. So uh, being from Oklahoma, I had to take a job in Wisconsin. So as I was up there, the native tribes learned that I was a bow maker. And I had several tribes contact me, Potawatomi, Stockbridge Muncie, Mohicans, Ojibwe bands. They had no bow makers. They had bows in their museum, but nobody knew how to make them. So I talked to them and tried to set up a program for them so I would research what kind of wood they were made out. And most of those tribes are Eastern tribes. They just relocated to Wisconsin. So Eastern tribes mostly made them out of hickory. Hickory is a great wood to make a, a bow out of, but it doesn't last. If you use hickory if, uh, for after you shoot it a while, it's, it starts to set and it'll take a bend and it won't come out. But it's a great bow. Anyway, I, I would contract them to make their style of bows that their people had made, what they looked like, and then I would help them make arrows fashioned in their tradition and the bowstrings. And I would put on classes like every Saturday for four hours for six weeks, and then we'd get done. Then at the end, I'd bring targets in. And they said, we're going to shoot these? Well, yeah, you made them. We're going to shoot them. So we'd set up targets out there, and they would spend a whole afternoon just wanting to shoot. Then people would come in, and I want to shoot. And they would borrow somebody's bow and shoot. But then I got uh, articles in the tribal papers for doing that. But to get back to the point is, it's great to have a craft that is dying. You know, there's not many people. I wish I had more people that want to learn that I could teach, but I don't have 61 more years to teach this craft to someone. But we're doing the best we can now by making some videos on, you know, arrow making. Then I'll do later one on bow making and maybe arrow bags. But we'll try to do the whole process and do presentations of all the things that I've created through my life and the, that I can carry on to my elders. So I want to thank you very much for listening. Uda.